Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Abby's Watercolor. I'm Abby. Today we'll keep painting flowers. This is a huge subject. I think you never exhaust it or get tired of it. So I guess we'll do a lot in the future. Now I'm doing a pencil sketch for our flower today. I always feel comfortable with a pencil sketch before I start. I don't know where my brush is heading for and where to end. When I'm doing my pencil sketch, I always try to make it very, very light. I know many people may use tracing paper, and you can use it too, but that's just too complicated for me. It just sounds like an extra step to me. As far as now, a simple pencil sketch works perfectly for me. But if you like using tracing paper, that's totally okay. You just keep doing it. Let's also talk about the color we're gonna use today. Basically, we'll use two colors for the flower, ultramarine deep and purple. But I think they are just too saturated for me. So I'll mix them with a lot of white, making them very creamy and very milky. And the flower will be very, very fresh in the end in using these two colors. That's what I want. We'll also need some dark purple and lemon yellow to paint the stamen in the center. Okay, after all the mixing stuff, we can start painting now. I'll go the light blue to start. Use my brush to color in the petal. It's a very, very light blue. As I said, I want the flower to be very, very fresh. So don't do dark paint at the beginning. We'll build it layer by layer. As it's still wet, I'm dabbing some pigment on the bottom of the petal. And they're bleeding out beautifully right away. We'll leave it there and work on the next petal. You see that I'm using the same way, painting the petal with a light blue and then do some wet on wet. It may seem pale at this moment, but later after we add more details on the petals, the whole flower will pop out from the paper. So don't worry. Now I want to use a different color, the light purple, to paint the other petals. Again, just color in the petal and try to make the part close to the center a little bit darker. Just a little bit is enough. You can use your brush to control the water, just like what I am doing now. When you think, well, I need more water here, then you can use your brush to mop the water here. When you feel there's too much water, I don't need that, then you can use a damp clean brush to mop away the water. Remember, you can totally control it, and that's a part of the fun of watercolor. Also, don't forget to leave some negative spaces intentionally while painting. This can help add an interesting texture to your flower. After we finish the first layer, we are ready to do the second layer. In watercolor, doing layer by layer can help you add more depth and definition to your painting. So always do the light paint firstly, and then you can keep working on it by adding more details. But if you do the opposite, the dark paint cannot be covered by the other layers, and you cannot change your paintings anymore. It will be looking flat in the end. Doing layer by layer also need a good quality of paper. What I'm using now is Kenzo 140 pound cold press paper. It has this great quality that you can do quite a lot of layers on it. 
Also, when you do the second layer, be careful not to cover the negative spaces you left in the first layer, because if you do that, the effort you made before will be meaningless. Of course, you can do some new negative spaces in the second layer if you want. That will look nice too. Then I'm gonna mix up a dark blue to paint the petals in the very bottom part of the flower. I want them to be darker because the light wouldn't hit there easily. So visually, when we observe a flower, we'll feel that the color in the lower part seems to be darker, although they are probably the same color. That's because of the sunlight. And when we paint, to exaggerate this difference to make the flower more dimensional. You can see from my painting, those darker blue petals, you feel that they are lying under the lighter blue petals. It's very magical, I think, and that's a very helpful technique when you paint a flower like this. When you feel happy about the petals, we can start working on the stamen. The whole stamen is made up of three circles. The middle one is yellow and the other two are purple. The color I'm using now is lemon yellow and you also need purple, burnt amber and some black to paint the rest of the stamen. These three colors, mix these three colors, you can get a very dark purple. But I don't want to go dark right now. I want to do it layer by layer. So I'm just using my brush to do some easy stippling on the paper. And you can see the little dots here. Some of them are purple and some of them are yellow. Just leave them alone and let them dry for a while. We'll do some decorative leaves now. The color I'm using for these leaves is radiant hue, but with a lot of water. So the texture we created is kind of translucent, not very opaque. And I'll do more leaf than the below right corner. I do this because I want the design to be balanced. It's not totally symmetrical or something like that. There's just some balance there. I'm also thinking about adding a bit of shading to the leaves, just make it more interesting. Then we'll come back to the stamen and do the second layer. Use a darker paint to darken up the center a little bit and then the outer portion of the stamen. I'm also doing some dots on the yellow part. I think that will be looking more natural and organic. You can keep adding more leaves around the flower if you like. I think it would be fun to add your favorite leaves on your painting. By the way, I did a video about floral composition one week ago. In that video, I painted different kinds of leaves around the flowers. Feel free to check out that video, and I'll put the link in the description below. I hope it can give you some inspiration. Here I'm doing some cute berries, and what I'm going to do for the next step is to add more details to our flower. I want to add some wings and the petals. I always like to do this when I'm painting flowers or leaves. What I'm doing now is choosing a smallest brush and doing some curvy, delicate lines on the petals. But make sure your petals have dried before you do this, because you don't want to mess up your painting on the final step. This is very relaxing, I think. If you haven't tried this to your flower, definitely do it. You won't regret it.
Okay, thank you guys so much for watching today's tutorial. And if you like this video and find it helpful, please don't forget to subscribe my channel so you can be the first one to see my video when it comes up. Bye, see you next time.